seen a different side to these in the last couple of weeks. Inter versus Salernitana. Inter minus 325, Salernitana plus 900. The minus one and a half. So do Inter win by two clear goals? Because if they do, you're going to get minus 115. The draw is at plus 475. Inter team total. They're going to score three to get plus 100. Salernitana, a plus 110 not to score. Uh, Matty, Salernitana going on the road to Inter. Inter, obviously a big, big game. And they were outstanding at the Camp Nou. But they came away with a draw. I suppose a draw was good enough. But I, I, my uh, my mind is like not made up on Inter and whether I can trust them at home to a minnow. Yeah, this is this is a really interesting game because Salernitana last week won that game two to one and they scored that last goal so late. I think it was like 90 plus five against Verona, which killed your draw. And that game screamed draw. And the thing that was oh, yeah, very shocking. Well, the game that was shocking about that game was, was the fact that Salernitana has so many one, one draws. That was the first time that I can remember the last two seasons since they've been in Serie A that they were able to score a goal after the 90th minute or really even after the 75th minute. Um, They just don't do it very often. I was very surprised to see that. So that makes me think maybe this team is, you know, hitting a different level now. Maybe they can stay up. Maybe they can start winning some more games. But looking at this game, um, Inter, I I mean, they looked fantastic yesterday. If they would have gotten three points out of that game, Barcelona would have been done for. Um, Barcelona probably would be for sure going to Europa League, which is crazy. But they are anyway, aren't they? Because of the head-to-head. Inter's head to head is so much better. So basically, Inter would have to drop points against Plazan, which yes. I just don't see happening. Yeah, I, 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 I'd have to go through the schedule because I, I don't remember who they have left. But yeah, I, I think you're right. I mean, it, that was a huge game for Inter at Camp Nou. And the thing that's interesting, I guess, about this fixture is when Inter played Salernitana last year, they outscored them 10 to 0 in two games. Both games were 5 0. I mean, they were complete blowouts. So. To me, it's like, I mean, is Inter really going to care a whole lot about this game? I don't know the answer to that because they played a very, very tough game yesterday. Um, Obviously, it was a very long and hard-fought game, especially defensively. Um, But I I think Inter get the job done, no problem in this game. But the other question that I have is Salernitana finally hitting a different level. Are they catching Inter at a good time? So for that reason, it's a pass for me. But I think this Inter minus one and a half, and, and especially this over three, Look very good on paper. The very problem I have with Salah and Tano is they didn't even look like scoring for the last 35, 40 minutes. It, it uh, seems and they then only the only score when they, minute, they need it. At the 95th minute, the ball goes into the box, lays it back, whips it around the corner, and it just killed me for having three draws. I mean, that would have made yeah. me another like another six units of uh, profit instead of just a 3.2. Mina, do we see Inter scoring three because at plus 100? What Inter's going to turn up? Because the Inter yesterday against Barcelona just looked fantastic. Yes and no. On a tactical level, what I thought was really interesting about this is that Inter really resorted to pragmatism because they're without Brozovic. And so they they know that they can't really control their midfield. So they're not going to outplay Barcelona over there. So they went for what suits them. And that is obviously to just, you know, go really vertical and uh, use their physicality. Now, here's the thing. If you if Barcelona just sat a little bit deeper and actually played with a little bit more pragmatism and tried in any way, shape or form to include a body that would do a little bit more in tactical on a on a sorry, on a tackling level, then maybe they might have won this match because on the ball, every Barcelona chance came from into giving it up and when playing out from the back. And that's what worries me because they're not that confident on the ball at the moment. They used to be but not so much anymore. Now, Salernitana is going to play deep. They're not going to leave the kind of gaps that that Barcelona did because they're not chasing the goals. So most of Salernitana's goals do come in the first 30 minutes. And most of Inter's goals come in the last 15, which is really interesting to see because it really is both ends. I'd probably go for the draw until the 75th minute if I was going to bet on that. But I don't know whether Inter is exhausted, whether or not Salernitana will raise their game like they do against the champions. You saw what they do to like Juventus, for example. You know, they do really like to take on a name. Um, and they are playing at home, and Inter is somebody that they would really relish to play against. And I feel like on a psychological level, Davide Nicola knows how to get them there. When they thrashed them last year, he I, he wasn't yet managing his magic, or I don't even know if he'd been employed yet, because it was in March. 
So they were they were basically beating the poor side of Salernitana, who only really got their points towards the end of the season. For me, I decided to go for corners. And I kind of want to see if you guys agree with me, because I went from nine to 11 corners, because usually in to make about six, there's going to be so many fouls in this match. And I know that Salernitana can get four. What do you guys think? I went for Salernitana to have two or three and Inter maybe we're going to obviously the last, Matty last 20 minutes they got the game uh, sewn up uh, they'll try and keep the ball yeah I'm happy with 10 or 11 um, I, I actually banned myself from Salernitana corners after they burned me on <laughs> they, they hit like 15 straight corner spreads at home and then I, I backed them twice in a row and they missed both times so I banned myself but I will give you the statistical numbers for this home and away so um, for Milan at home, for I'm sorry, for Inter at home, over 9 and over 10, 75%. Over 11 is 50%. So I think you look good there. Now, for Salonitana on the road, these numbers are actually perfect for your bet. Over 9, 50%. Over 10, 25%. Over 11, 25%. So 9 to 11 is it's the numbers like that for over 55%. So um, with the line that you're getting on this at a plus 160, that it's definitely, definitely better than what um, the odds, or I'm sorry, the odds that I have suggest that your line is is perfect. So I do like 9 to 11. I think it's a good bet. I don't know what they were last season when these guys played each other. Um, I did not pull that up, um, but I, I do think this is a good bet. Okay, let's have a little look at the official picks because I went for a little bit of Inter half time, full time at minus 110. Um, I think that they're going to be too good and maybe they'll just cruise home in the last 20 minutes. Corners 9 to 11 at plus 160 for the Queen. And Matty has just let it go. That's just because Salah and Itana are involved um, and he didn't want to go anywhere near the corners. That 